be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I think everyone here knows, as you've heard throughout the service so far, that today we're celebrating the Reformation. That time when Luther, Martin Luther nailed 95 theses or statements to the door of a church in Germany. And I know you all know what year it is, right? 2018. So if you put those two together, it's the Reformation, it's 2018. Do you know what that means? That means this year we are celebrating Reformation anniversary number 501. If you were sleeping under a rock last year, you, you probably missed the big one, the 500th anniversary. But for those of you who weren't sleeping under a rock, you can make this interesting comparison between last year and this year. And how significantly different is the hype that went into the celebration for the Reformation last year. In our congregation, in our church body, in the world at large, versus this year. That's, that's not anything bad, it's just interesting how anniversaries go. It's almost kind of silly, isn't it? We get really excited about these nice round numbers. But if you think about it, shouldn't we be, if we were that excited for 500 years, shouldn't we be just a little bit more for, excited for 501 years of Reformation celebration? I think the point really is, how excited you get about the Reformation really depends not on a number, but on what you think the Reformation was all about. And you'll hear a lot of different opinions. Some will say it was a mistake, a tragedy, it never should have happened, it's the cause of all these problems in our world today. A lot of other people will say it, it, it was good. Look at what Martin Luther did to change the world in the areas of of the church and the government and music and the arts and education and human rights and the list goes on. And those are all good things. But as we sit here today, other than the fact that we have come to church like we usually do, we need to know how to answer why are we celebrating the Reformation. And it wasn't, it's not just a big deal as far as it's the first celebration, the 501st or the 5,000th and first Reformation anniversary. What matters with the Reformation, the essence of it all comes down to something that's timeless and eternal. And that's the gospel. And what was so great about the Reformation is that God brought back to light to all the world through Martin Luther and many others, this good news that it's for you. That you have the eternal gospel. And while you have it in this world, it's also under attack. It's in danger. So as we look at Revelation 14, which by the way was the funeral sermon text for Martin Luther himself, we see both how precious this gospel is for us and how endangered it is as well. This text was probably chosen for Luther's funeral because at that time and, and ever since, a lot of people had, have said that this, that Martin Luther fulfills these words you hear today. So you have to look at the context of what's going on in Revelation. Just go back a few chapters and you meet some terrifying beasts. You see the, the dragon. And these beasts coming out of the earth and the sea, they represent Satan himself and every anti-Christian force that there is in this world. And you go reading past Revelation 14, you learn all about this gloom and doom that's coming upon this world. So Revelation 14 is somewhat like an oasis for God's people to pause and be refreshed and be reminded that in all of this chaos and turmoil in the world, God is still in control to protect us as people. And he does that by sending several angels. We meet one of them today. John said that he saw an angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all, and the springs of water. 
it's kind of interesting to speculate or wonder why is he flying in the air, this angel? Well, it could be so that he can spread so quickly around the world with the gospel. It could be so that he can escape all the forces of evil that try to take down God's message. And who is this, this angel? Often in the Bible you hear angel, you think an invisible supernatural being. And that's possible, but it also really just means a messenger. So that there's nothing wrong in concluding this can represent a flesh and bones human messenger of God proclaiming his word. But what really matters here is what is that messenger saying to all the world? You heard it already. Fear God. Give him the glory because his judgment has come. So worship him. And as you think about that more, isn't that exactly what all the world needs to hear? Fear God, give him glory. The judgment has come, worship him. The world, everyone in the world needs to hear that because that's exactly what we don't have and what we, by nature, don't want. Does the world want to fear God? No. Nope. Worship him? No. Nope. Give him the glory? Definitely not. Think about the judgment? No. No. If anything, the world is directly opposed to God in all of these ways. Unless we start thinking, well, that's everyone out there, but not me. Remember this good news, this, this gospel, this word of God is being proclaimed to everyone in the world, including you and me. You and I need to hear it, too. If we're honestly examining our own sinful desires and motivations, we realize that we, too, in our sinful flesh, we don't want to fear God because that means I have to think about my sins and the judgment I deserve because of them. And I don't want to give God the glory because then where would the glory be for me? And worship Him, well, that's nice, but I have a lot of other things I could do with my time instead. And so in all of this, we might start to wonder, well, where's the good news? After all, the word gospel, what he is proclaiming, this angel, the word gospel means good news. Well, it's coming, just a minute. You can't know the good news unless you first understand and believe the bad news. And the bad news is simply this, as we've already said. Fear God, give him glory, worship him. That should downright terrify every one of us in this world because it's what we don't want to do and we cannot do on our own and we deserve the judgment of hell because of it. But, just a few verses before this we see the Lamb of God standing with all of God's people forever. We should fear God in terror, but we don't have to fear Him in that way because the Lamb of God is here in these verses. And not just in Revelation 14, but all throughout that book and all throughout the Bible, it's pointing at one person above all else, Jesus Christ, your Savior, who became one of us and lived among us and died in our place and rose for our sakes so that he could declare every one of us not guilty for all of our sins and conquer all of our enemies and give us the eternal victory in his name. That is the good news, the gospel, the heart and soul of the Reformation and our entire lives as well. This is it. And this leads us to fear God. As you look at Martin Luther, you see that Maybe no one else ever feared God as much as, as he did, or understood what it meant to fear God. For much of his life, Martin Luther lived in fear of God. He thought that God was only this angry judge who wanted to punish him for his sins because of how sinful he was. He would look at Jesus and say, no, I couldn't love God. I could only hate him because I knew he punishes sinners like me as he did as is shown on the cross. That was until God opened Luther's eyes through his word to see that this righteousness God demands from us to fear God and to glorify him and to worship him, that righteousness God demands is the righteousness he also gives freely to all of us by faith 
in Christ alone. So that with Luther we can fear God. Not the kind of fear that means we have to shake in our boots anymore because he's going to punish us for our sins. But no, instead we fear God above all else with this awesome reverence and wonder and amazement that we have it as good as we do because of Christ and Christ alone. This is the good news that is written in the blood of the Lamb, the verdict not guilty of all of your sins. It is the eternal gospel that God sends through his angels, his messengers throughout the world to proclaim, as you've heard already today, in the name of Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. You have this eternal gospel. It's yours. But as you know, the world wants to rip it from you. And that is Satan's one goal in life. As we saw in, in the Old Testament lesson, in, in the Gospel lesson, Jesus promised, you will be persecuted because of this good news that you believe. So we see how Satan has deceived the world into thinking, well, God doesn't exist. Or maybe worse, when he lets people think God does exist, but we can make God into something he's not, something we want him to be. So people say, well, God, you know, he's just, just like that, that kind old grandpa who just winks at you when you do something a little wrong. That's who God is. For God is, you know, he's, he's my, my life coach who is only here to tell me how to do all the right things and to get me ahead in life. Is that the fear of God? The God who is the judge of us and our sins. Or else the world will tempt us and we are so tempted to go along with it to say, well, God's word is not the eternal will of our judge, our God, but it's more like Plato, that you can pull apart and change the colors and shape into whatever you want it to be. So that on one day, if I want God to be okay with this sin, I'll find a way to make, make his word say that. But on the next day, I, I'm going to condemn you for that same sin. You see, if we go along with the world and the devil, we lose our fear of God. And if we don't take his word seriously, we don't understand the judgment we deserve for our sins. And then to make it worse all the more, we won't understand that the Lamb of God steps in and intercedes for us in that hour of judgment. To cover us with his righteousness. To wash away all of our sins. Yes, fear God in this awesome joy as you stand before him in reverence and wonder. He has forgiven even me. This is your eternal gospel. And this leads us to give glory to the Lamb alone. Now I'm sure every Christian in this world would agree with that statement. We should, as Christians, give glory only to Jesus for our salvation. If there's someone who says, no, we don't want to give Jesus all the credit... We might have to say, well, are you really a Christian then? But that doesn't stop people throughout the last thousands of years from saying, or in certain ways, making it clear that they have robbed Christ of his glory. We look again to the days of Martin Luther to see how that happened in, in some subtle ways, but, but also some obvious ways. How in Luther's day, the church taught, yes, you are Jesus is your Savior, your only Savior. All your sins are forgiven. But there's still something you need to do. You still need to make up for the, the punishment your sins have earned in this life. And so the church would say, well, you can do that. You can make this satisfaction before God by saying certain prayers or completing certain tasks. Or if you don't want to do that, just buy a piece of paper called an indulgence and, and it counts. And that's what Luther was fighting against with his 95 theses and, and the rest of his life. And we don't have, even have time to talk about the rest of it, the, the prayers to the saints and purgatory, the sacrifice of the mass. The point in all of it is this. In so many ways it was being said that you can do something to earn, at least in part, your salvation. God's favor for you. 
And what Luther realized is, this is robbing Christ of his glory. It's nothing else than slapping Jesus across the face as he hangs on the cross. Because Jesus didn't hang on that cross and say, it is finished, so that we sinners could come along and try the, to finish the job. Jesus didn't suffer the full weight of hell on that cross so that we sinners could think and try to earn heaven on our own. Jesus didn't rise from the grave so that we sinners could think all we need to do is pick ourselves up by our bootstraps and rise up to being as great as Jesus was, or as close as we can get. And I know you're probably not tempted to buy indulgences, or even in any way to say, well, I, I'm trying to earn God's favor on my own, but it's often so subtle, isn't it? And you hear it so often, you, you've maybe been tempted to think it in one way or another yourself. You think about, am I in good standing with my God? Or someone asks you, well, what happens when you die? And you're tempted to start saying, well, maybe I haven't been that bad lately. Maybe, just maybe, I've, I've been better than others. Maybe I've been good enough for God. And if we start going down the road of good enough for God, what we're really saying to Jesus is, you were not good enough for me. Because I needed to add to what you've done and complete what you did not finish. And we too would be slapping Jesus in the face as he dies for all our sins. So you understand why we thank God so much, not for Luther himself as much as what he did through Luther, showing us how seriously we must take all of God's word. How we take it seriously when God says, you are a sinner who deserves hell and you can do nothing at all in any way to earn my favor and salvation. But with Luther, we rejoice in taking God's word so seriously that we know he would never lie to us when he says, but I have taken it away for you. All the guilt and punishment you deserve, I have put on my son, the lamb, and forgiven all your sins. Don't you see the burden is lifted off your shoulders? And the price is paid in full, the gift is free, the doors are flung wide open as heaven is yours now and forever. But if for even a moment we try to take any of the credit or glory for ourselves, we not only rob Christ of his glory, we rob ourselves of the only firm foundation and sure hope we have of eternal life. In the moment of temptation, in the moment of terror, in the moment of death and in the hour of judgment and God says the hour of judgment has come if any if any of it is on us then it's all on us and none of it's on Christ so Jesus steps in and says not do this and, and you'll earn heaven he says this I have done it all for you it is finished and heaven is yours. You have this eternal gospel. It's for you. After all, it's for the entire world, every nation, tribe, language, and people. How could it not be yours as well? It is for you. So give God, give the Lamb, all the glory He deserves. And there's many ways we can do that, yes. But maybe think of just one way in which we give God the glory. As God said through his servant Isaiah, he once said, This is the one whom I esteem, the one who is humble and contrite in spirit and who trembles at my word. Yes, we take God's word seriously. Tremble at God's word as you stand before your judge who crushes your self-righteousness and devastates your pride. Tremble at his word as you come in humility and sorrow over your sins before him. And then tremble even more when you hear the sweet voice of the Lamb saying, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Just tremble at God's word 
that he has given it to so many of his angels, his servants, who fly throughout this world every day to proclaim the good news to sinners in every nation, tribe, language, and people. Tremble that God has given his word to you and engraved it on your heart as well so that you know you have this eternal gospel and you have it to share with others. As God has given it to you, he wants to give it to others through you as well. There are many reasons we celebrate the Reformation. A lot of them are good ones, too. But in the end, there's only one that lasts forever. It's this eternal gospel that is yours now and forever. So what else is there to do but with all creation, fear God, and give glory to the Lamb who alone was slain on a cross so that you could wear the crown of life forever. Amen.